Then at 12.45, the limousine will draw up outside. I will go out, meet the Duchess, say a few words, put her at ease, and escort her inside. Once inside, I will introduce you to various members of the Leisure Centre staff. Yes, very good, very nice, Linda, well done, very smart. Which brings me to another general point. Personal freshness. <laughs> We've actually got up in a bit of a hurry this morning and weren't quite as scrupulous as we might have been. <laughs> the thing to remember here, of course, is think of others. <laughs> Tell her I left a can of right guard in the equipment locker, would you? <laughs> then at 12.48, Tim, you're wearing stockings. Tights, Mr. Britters. Well, it's cold out here. We've only got these little shorts and T-shirts on. Tim, this building has a heating system that costs a taxpayer nearly half a million pounds. It's those doors, Mr. Britton. Yes, yes, Mr. Britton. You know what to put on because it's all right, all right. So we get a bit of a draft from the doors. Shall I get someone to have a look at them? I don't think there's any need for that, Laura. You see, they close eventually. <laughs> and we'll just have to be patient till they close again. <laughs> right, we're at 12.48 when I bring her over to reception where Carol... <laughs> where Carol gives her a few words of welcome. Welcome to our leisure city, you will hide it. <laughs> we hope... we hope you will enjoy your visit. Do we get a smile, Carol? <laughs> Splendid. <coughs> Everything all right at home, is it? And then we move on to... where's William? He's off sick, Mr. Brittus. Gavin's standing in for him. Yes, well, unfortunately, Gavin's not black, is he, Laura? <laughs> I'm sorry? It's all right, Gavin. I realise it's not your fault. <laughs> you see, in my speech, I explained that our job here is to draw the community together, which is why we have a staff representative of all colours and creeds. And I can't really say that. There's only one colour in sight, can I? <laughs> you could say something else. Does anyone know a black person who can help us out? <laughs> Come on, someone must. It's only to stand in line for a few minutes. The Baptist Church is a gospel choir. We don't want to flood the place, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, what about that chap I saw you with the other evening? I'm sorry? The chap in the pub on Tuesday. Oh, I... You said you went to your mother's on Tuesday. <laughs> I think you must have made a mistake. No, no, tall, good-looking black chap. <laughs> Mr. Bridges. <laughs> He's actually going on a battle. Oh, that's not nice, I must say. I'm sorry, Timmy, really I am. Uh, Laura, could you call an electrician? There's something not quite right about those doors. <laughs> that looks nice, Mrs. Brutus. Thank you. You're not staying, then? I can't, unfortunately. My youngest has suspected concussion. In fact, if you could tell my husband, I'll be at the hospital. Yes, of course. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's probably nothing. One just likes to be on the safe side. How's it all going downstairs? Oh, fine. Good. Well, there are one or two little problems, but Mr. Brittus is dealing with them. Why don't you leave? <laughs> I'm sorry? While well, you can. How do you mean? You're a nice girl, Laura. You've got your whole life ahead of you. <laughs> Mrs. Bridges, I don't... You think something's going to happen? Frankly, yes. But he's planned the day so carefully. That's what usually does the damage. <laughs> your little boy hasn't got concussion at all, has he? No. Look, Laura, when my husband starts dealing with little problems, they won't go away. You just get bigger problems. Problems, problems. Hello, darling. Do you mind, Laura? <laughs> no wonder it's so cold in here. The boiler's not working. Actually, the boiler is working, but the boilerman hasn't a clue how to program the automatic hopper. And of course, I haven't got time to read the entire manual. Heating, heating, heating. You've got a new boilerman? We've had to replace quite a few staff in the last week. What's wrong with the new man? Oh, nothing really. He's an ex-naval stoker, but he got some shrapnel on his head in Korea. <laughs> Good morning. It's Gordon Britters here, the manager of the Leisure Centre. I'd like to hire some industrial heaters, please. Today, this morning. I'll take them all. Oh, in that case, I'd better collect them then. How big are they? So, that's seven cars, two members of staff to a car. That's 14 people. Oh, dear. Why don't you give the man a shovel? Sorry? Why don't you forget about the automatic hopper and give the man a shovel? 
I'll get back to you. <laughs> Laura, you've met the better half, haven't you? Not just a pretty face, you know. There's a little brain working quietly away in there somewhere. <laughs> a shovel. So simple. I'll tell the boy the man, shall I? No, I'll do that. He's an ex-naval stoker, wounded in Korea. So Laura told me. Well, pleasant though this is, I can't stand around gossiping all day. I've... My goodness me, what's that? Oh, it's a bit of felt tip or something. Laura, you better get some carbon tetrachloride. You'll probably have to send out for some. And we might need a mask in this confined space. Who can I spare? It's all under control, dear. A wonderful woman. I told you, didn't I, Laura? Well, let's see if I can't fire up the boilerman with a few words of encouragement. <laughs> That's another thing. If you can just stop him encouraging people. Has he given his talk to the staff yet? Yes. Did anyone walk out? Three. Oh, it was 14 at Aldershot. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. I'm sure everything will be fine this time. I'm sure it... Fine. <laughs> Hello? Yes, I know it's cold, but I think if I'm given two minutes, I may be able to do something about it. Thank you. Ah. Hello. Mr. Barnes. Hello. Uh, Mr. Barnes. <laughs> Good news, Mr. Barnes. No more worries about all these buckers and levers. I brought you this. You see, we have a boiler here, Mr. Barnes, and several tons of anthracite here. Need I say more? Right, I want you to shovel it by hand, Mr. Barnes, using this. It's Chief Stoker, Barnes, isn't it? <laughs> I've come down from the bridge, Chiefy, with a message from the Admiral, and the situation is this. We are chasing a couple of enemy cruisers, Barnes. It's vital we catch up with them and attack, but we desperately need more steam, and you are the only man who can help us. Can you do it, Barnes? Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Don't forget, Barnes, the whole ship's company is relying on you. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Britter? Angie! Mr. Britter. Laura's rung Michael and he'll be here in half an hour. Michael? A friend, the West Indian. Oh, right. Well, there's a call from the builders. They'd like to see you in the swimming pool. Ah, finished at last, have they? Oh, by the way, I think I've sorted out our Mr. Barnes. It's just a question of knowing how to deal with these people, Angie. I did a course at Woking. Oh, my goodness me, look at that. Wonderful, isn't it? All over this building, small groups like that are preparing to show what this centre's all about. Real people coming together to exercise and enjoy themselves. I must just give them a few words of encouragement, Angie. Uh, Mr. Protector, <laughs> 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 Because I think that you have something to show and teach us normal people. After all, who's to say what's normal? In some parts of the world, it's quite acceptable to be overweight. Yeah. <laughs> but you people have chosen to fight back and say, no, I am not grotesque. And I applaud that, I really do. And I think it's just another way that we at this centre can show that with cheerfulness and enthusiasm, we can overcome any stigma. So, keep up the good work, ladies, and dare I say it, on with the dance. <laughs> Salt of the earth, those people, Angie. Right, the swimming pool. <laughs> Look, lads, I'm sorry. We have to tell him. Well, it looks all right to me. Yeah, I know how you feel. Been working around the clock to try and finish it, but if the lining's cracked... Brown Owl's not going to like it. 
Couldn't we let him find out for himself tomorrow? Look, listen, that thing's losing 400 gallons an hour. By tomorrow, his brand new leisure centre's gonna be floating off down the high street. <laughs> you know, we might not like the man, but if we don't tell him, well, does anyone deserve that? Ah, workers of the world. Would that we all had time for tea breaks, eh? Mr. Britas. So, it's all finished then, and not a moment too soon, eh, Laura? Uh, tell Colin you can bring the children in now, will you? Oh, the lads have worked all night to try and finish it, Mr. Britas. Good, good. Now, a word in your ear, if I may, Patrick. I couldn't help noticing some of your lads haven't had recourse to a bar of soap or razor this morning. Well, like I said, Mr. Britas, they've been working all night. Now, I hope you don't take offence if I mention cleanliness. But you see, my problem is the Duchess of Kent. Hey. <laughs> As a personage of some importance, I can't help thinking she deserves something a little better than being greeted by people who haven't bothered to shave. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose I can fit you in the background somewhere. Oh, my God, what's that? Colin, wait here. They're not ours, Mr. Britas. They get in through the fire doors. This is a leisure centre for the community, Colin. We can't have people strolling in off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you and you out. Laura, see these children outside and secure the fire doors, please. Mr Brittas. You'll find the chains and padlocks in my office. Why do you hear, Mr Brittas? Quickly, Colin. Why can't I meet her? I've told you, your place is up there behind the glass panel. But she's my favourite royal. I've always admired her. If I could just shake her hand. No. Why not? I think you know why not, Colin. It's nearly healed. It is not nearly healed. It's visibly suppurating. No, no, it's just the banana poultice. There's no puss or anything. I don't care what it is, Colin. You are not shaking hands with the Duchess. Is that quite clear? Yes, Mr. Bridus. I think the way you can help best would be to make sure those children got changed. Yes, Mr. Bridus. The pool's all right, then, is it? Yes. The builders were a bit worried. Well, they said nothing to me. Patrick? Gone. You know, that's the third group of people to leave this morning. I'm beginning to wonder if the Duchess of Kent was such a wise choice after all. <laughs> I just feel rather let down, that's all. Oh, I know. I mean, why would he say he was round at his mother's when all the time he's off with some... Anyone seen Britus? What? It's getting very hot in the viewing gallery. The toffee crisps have melted in the vending machine and clogged up the coin slot. <laughs> You all right, Tim? He's still a bit upset. Oh, yes, of course. I've been telling him he's got no reason to worry. Haven't I? Oh, come on, Tim. Well, he's probably on his way to his mother's, met someone and popped in the pub for a quick drink. That's all. But why didn't he tell me? Well, he didn't give him much chance, did you, storming off like that? Do you think that's all it was? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Don't you think so, Linda? Yes, of course it was. I'm always doing that, jumping to conclusions. Thanks. I feel much better now. I was only trying to make her feel better. Well, no one told me the dog had died. <laughs> well, troops, we're sure we've got time to be sitting around like this. Mr. Britus, I. In a minute, th Linda. Tim, can I have a word? Yep. That was a bit out of character this morning, wasn't it? Sorry? It may be just my imagination, but I thought you were a bit tetchy in the lineup. Oh, that, no, that's all sorted out now. Meant to be doing something with you, was it, young Gavin? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sort of. And he went to the pub instead. Tim, life's too short to get worried about things like that. If I had a pound for every time someone promised to meet me and never turned up, I'd be Paul Getty Jr. <laughs> Timothy, it's human nature. Really? I was unmarried once myself, you know. Used to go to the pub with me mates, have a few drinks, have a game of darts, a few more drinks, go off for a takeaway. Next thing you know, it's three o'clock in the morning, you wake up on the floor of some total stranger's flat. <laughs> what does it matter, eh, Tim boy? I mean, it's not as if you're married to the man, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Young Linda, what can we do for you? What about the vending machine? Mm. <laughs> 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 Kiss them, they're coming back doors. Yes, good. They don't seem to be closing properly, and we're losing an awful lot of heat. Mm -hmm. That should be the timing mechanism. I just go and get my tools. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Linda, they can't have it both ways. One minute it's too cold, the next minute it's too hot. Just tell them to make up their minds, will you? Yes, Mr. Britus. Uh, Carol, what exactly is going on here? Nothing, Mr. Britus. This way. 
Let's have it up on the desk, shall we, Carol? I don't know what you mean, Mr. Bush. On the desk. <gasps> Mr. Bush, I know you told me to leave it with my mother. Carol. If you don't do the mom feeding the baby, I'm going to cry for you. Carol, I think I'm known to be a fair man, but we cannot be feeding our babies when the Duchess of Kent comes through those doors. <laughs> Do you know who that is? I think Laura was talking to him. I knew it. We cannot have a Duchess meeting people dressed like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but really, no. What? It's very good of you to come, but I'm afraid we don't need you after all. But the lady said... I know exactly what the lady said. I'm afraid the fact is... How much do we owe you? Well, the call-out fee is £25. £25? <laughs> all right, £25. There we go. I'll give you a receipt, shall I? I don't want a receipt, just... Goodbye, and thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Come on, Carol, out you go, your turn. Oh, Mr. Brutus, I beg of you, if I lose my job. Carol, you're not losing your job. I'm simply asking you to take the baby away. Yes, Mr. And Carol, yes. try and remember what we said yesterday about inner serenity. Yes, Mr. Breathe deep, think calm. Yes, Mr. Oh, my God! to open them. <laughs> the infrared beam, Carol, the magic eye. <laughs> Good. Now you're thinking, Carol. Right, the next thing to do... Don't you come near me, I'll tell you! Are you sure there's nothing wrong with the pool, Mr Brittles? What? The pool, we keep pouring all this water... All right, Colin, one thing at a time. Let's just stay calm. <laughs> Colin, I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking Carol home. Thank you, You'll have to be a little bit careful. It's probably just hormones, which is getting somewhat hysterical. <laughs> right, Mr. Brittas. Oh, by the way, Laura asked me to give Let's you Let's concentrate on one thing at a time, shall we, Colin? Just get her home, all right? Right, Mr. Brittas. <clears throat> Hello, Brittas. Ah, oh, swimming pool. What's the problem? Well, he says to keep filling it. Just wish I knew where all that water was going. Hang on, Laura. It's the Saga Badminton team, Mr. Brittles. A couple of them have gone down with a heat stroke. Heat stroke? It's even hotter downstairs. Well, let's open a window, shall we? I thought you said they were sealed for the air conditioning. What? Yes, so they are. I better have another word with that boiler man. Why don't you turn the TV on, Laura? Go find him a cartoon or something. <laughs> you like cartoons? <laughs> Jolly good. Uh, hello, Mr. Barnes. I, I wondered if... Uh, yes, Mr. Barnes, this is the captain here, Mr. Barnes. <laughs> yes, speaking from the bridge, Mr. Barnes. Is anything the matter? He thinks we're sinking. <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Barnes, it's getting a little bit too hot up here, Mr. Barnes. I wondered if... Ah! Are you all right, Captain, sir? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> What do you think you're doing? That's for the Duchess and the Mayor. Well, I'm hungry. <laughs> They've been here since five o'clock this morning, Mr. Brittus. It was the only time the ambulance could deliver them. Well, you're going to have to wait. You get tea and buns in the gym when the visit's over. i give you all the fire in this cafe. Sorry about that, Barnes. Barnes? Barnes? 
I don't believe it. Shall I go down and have a word? Better if I do, I think, Laura. This calls for a certain amount of tact. <laughs> Unconscious, Mr. Britton. It's an electric shock. All right, stand back, stand back, stand back. He's unconscious. You better get Laura. All right, Mr. Britton. He needs air. You better open the doors, Linda. Laura Lancing, reception, Mr. please. Laura Lancing, reception, please. We've already called one this morning. What happened to him? Gavin, can you see if there's an electrician in the building, please? All right, Mr. Britton. You better open the fire doors, Linda. They're locked, Mr. Britton. What happened? I came as quickly as I could. Well, there's been an accident. Laura, can I have your attention for a moment, please? We need to open the fire doors. What? The fire doors. You told me to lock them. I know. Now I'd like to unlock them. Can I have the keys, please? You've got them. No, I haven't. I gave them to Colin to give to you. Colin has the keys? Yes. Well, where's Colin? <laughs> Colin, do you have the keys to the fire doors? I'm sorry, Mr. Brigasse. The keys to the fire doors. Right here, Mr. Brigasse. Well, give them to... Uh, bring them round. <laughs> Stay exactly where you are. Laura, I want you to go up to my office now. Linda, I want you to go up to my office now and get the architect's plans. Plans? Just do it. There must be some way in and out of here that isn't completely sealed up. Right, Mr. Brittis. I've got your electrician, Mr. Brittis. He says he can fix it. <laughs> this is a boy scout. You're not an electrician. Well, I've got my badge. All right, all right. Can you fix that? Somebody's poked the wires out. We know that. Can you put the bloody things back? <laughs> I'll just screw them back in. Wonderful. Try the boiler room again, Gavin. Tell him to switch the heat off. Oh, right, Mr. Brittis. Still no reply from the boiler room. Never mind, Gavin. There must be a way out of here. What about this ventilation shaft? Why don't we call the fire brigade? What? Well, they could break the door down with a sledgehammer or something. Oh, that's very helpful, that is, Laura. The Duchess of Kent is due here in two minutes, and you suggest we greet her with a couple of hundredweight of broken glass all over the floor? Well, we've got to do something. We can't just sit here. We've just got to keep our heads and wait till young Kevin here. He'll never do it. We're going to die. We're all going to die. <laughs> Kevin, how long do you think it's going to take? Um, one more wire. There you are, you see. He's just got one more wire. Then the doors will be open. We'll all be able to breathe the fresh air, the cool, fresh air. Oh, Mr. Martyrs. <laughs> what? It's Colin. What does he want? I think he wants to tell you the Duchess of Kent has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> She's here, everyone. Quick, up. Into line, Linda. Quick, get into line. Get into line. Quick, Gavin, get them into line. Into line, everyone. Quick, into line. Into line.
Don't you shake hands, Colin. Don't shake hands. Oh, my God. <laughs> you better open the doors now, Mr. Britas. If I can open the bloody doors, don't you think I'd have done it by now? Good afternoon, Your Majesty. <laughs> Welcome to Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre. I'm afraid we're having a little bit of trouble with the doors at the moment, but we should be able to have them open in about... Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Then I shall take great pleasure in introducing you to various members oh of the Oh, my God. What is it? He's fainted. <laughs> I've got it! I've got it! Quick, into line, into line, into line, get a bit more into line, into line, everyone! Colin, bring Her Majesty through the boiler room! 